Uh, well, typically, as the cricket season, well, locally anyway, comes to an end, the sun comes out. The season finishes on Saturday, and then the sun comes out on Sunday. Uh, and as you will see from our special guest, uh, the sky is absolutely blue. There are no clouds. And the sun is shining on Chelmsford, who are the Hamro Foundation Premier League winners. Uh, and joining us is Rob Hato from Chelmsford. Rob, congratulations and welcome to 98 Out. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us. So you are the uh, vice chairman of the club. Just tell us the secret of your success this year. Um, it's a bit of a cliche, really, but I think it does just genuinely come down to kind of, you know, a real desire and, and hard work from the lads. I mean, it's been it, it's been a bit of a strange year for the club. Obviously, the, the success on the pitch with the first and second team has been fantastic. Um, and the third team, unfortunately, just missed out on a, on a treble title as well. Um, well, they just missed out on promotion as well, unfortunately. Um, obviously, with us losing, you know, a, a genuine club great in Bob Shortman, um, someone who was obviously so well respected in the club and around the Essex League, it was it was a bit of a straight, you know, obviously it was a bit of a tough year for us. And I think we're still kind of mourning that as well. Um, so I think having won the first two senior titles is um, a fitting tribute, really, to to all the hard work that someone like Bob has delivered over the years, as well as other coaches, um, Keith Goodman, Al Fergus, Eddie Lawrence, Andrew Shepherd. I think looking at through the teams, it gives us great pride that in those top two sides, I think in the first team, there's seven or eight that have come through the Colts. Um, and I think it's probably similar, if not higher, in the second team. So... I think it, it really does just come down to kind of um, growing up together. You just build such a bond and, you know, you really do fight for each other um, to, to kind of get over the line. And, I mean, as everyone knows, the first 11 Premier is such a tough league um, to win. Um, so I think to, to get over the line on that again is, um, is really special. Well, speaking of being a rookie chairman, I wouldn't know anything about that, but Webby knows about winning the title. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron just thinks it's a tough league to stay in, let alone win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I mean, it, is, it was, a, as you mentioned, um, it was a comprehensive performance by both the first and the second 11s. Um, uh, you, both teams lost very, very little games. Um, and even, you know, with the gods conspiring against all of us at the start of the year with the weather, um, and certainly Brentwood, uh, <laughs> to a lesser extent, but Ricky were punished by sort of not being able to take to the field when... I think on certain occasions you did manage to get out there and um, it, it did make a difference. But, you know, not with Sandy, it was fairly comprehensive all the way through. I think probably just sort of looking through the results, the batting was a, was a big part of it, particularly with the first. Yeah, um, I, mean the, I mean, Jack Sterling in the first team, I mean, he's a, he's a fantastic captain and everyone knows he's a, he's a good player. But, I mean, the year he's had has been nothing short of remarkable. Um, I think I can say with some confidence that that's the most successful individual performance we've seen a batter have in, in a Chelmsfordshire. Um, Nick Prout, I remember in our first year in the Premier League, scored about 900 runs. I think going back years, Martin Daniels would have got 700 a couple of times. Um, but it's just, um, yeah, the year he had has been phenomenal. And I think, I like to think we're realistic. I think if he didn't have the year that he did have, um, I think I don't think we'd be kind of sitting here talking about us winning the first 11 Premier. Um, I mean, people chipped in um, every now and again. Um, and the bowling is always very solid. I mean, we've got two brilliant spinners um, and a very solid team attack. Um, but I mean, Jack was probably the difference between kind of coming first and coming third, perhaps. Um, and to see him do it and, you know, again, someone who has come through the cult system um, and has developed so well is, um, you know, it's fantastic to see. You couldn't beat Brentwood on Saturday, though. No, they, they in typical fashion. I mean, yeah. we, I mean, particularly in the second team. Um, I mean, it was quite bizarre <laughs> that we 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 managed to win most games chasing quite comfortably because going back through the years, we um we like to make chasing low scores hard work. Um, we're notoriously. I mean, going back years, I remember um, we were playing Woodford Wells and I think we were 14 for six or something, chasing about 150. Um, so, yeah, it was, um, it's was. it been a bit of a strange year, but I think um, I think the team's just found a way, uh, you know, a method that works for them. You know, in the second team, it was just chasing. You know, we had a really good bowling attack that managed to keep scores down um, and the batting just kind of looked after itself, really. Um, there weren't too many times where kind of the lower order were needed. Um I think there were a couple of people who didn't bat at all, but 
yeah, I mean, the, the first team, especially, I mean, like I say, Jack had a phenomenal year and it was um, yeah, a shame they couldn't finish with the win at Brentwood. And perhaps in some ways it was fairly typical that we made hard work of it to finish the season off. But um, I imagine there were probably some tired legs and tired minds towards the end of it. But, um, the, you know, it doesn't take away what was a, a phenomenal season from them. It's ironic, really, that uh, that Brentwood did beat you on the last game of the season because it was for for us, for me, it was that was almost the turning point of our season when we played you at Chelmer, um, and that was us chasing a low score, which we failed to do, and you bowled us out. And I mean, I haven't looked at the points, but I think if that had been reversed and we'd have chased you down there and you hadn't got the twenty five points, with only thirty, I think it's just over thirty points difference between first and second, that that could have been the the decider and then the last game of the season could well have been the title decider so yeah it could have been I think it, it's one of those things again I think it's just um I know it's a bit of a cliche but I think you just build a bit of momentum don't you and I think especially in those leagues where they're so tough once you get on a run um I mean anyone can beat anyone um you know you've seen you do see some low scores and some surprise results and once you get on a run um you know you do just build that momentum and availability was generally one of the factors this year I think we had pretty consistent availability throughout um, and I think again that makes a big difference when you know when you're suddenly missing six players from one week and you've got to chop and change everything it it does make things a lot more difficult so I think having consistent availability as well um, as well as building that momentum early on kind of um, you know it does make a big difference. Yeah and that yeah. might answer why because it's not the first time you've done the first and second team double is it you've done that Maybe even the last time you won the league, I don't know. But um. yeah, we did it in 2017. Um, that was the last time we did it. We may, I think, we have done it in previous years, but that was the last time we did it. And that was, um, yeah, that, I mean, that was a that was a remarkable one. I think the second team won it fairly comfortably. Um, I think they might have won it with a game or two to spare. And then on the last day, we needed um, we needed to win batting first in the first team against Colchester, and we needed just results to go our way with Chingford beating Wanstead. And um, yeah, I mean, that was an incredibly special time because we'd won our game. And then I think everyone was just on phones trying to get hold of Chingford, finding out what was going on. I mean, that's the beauty of play cricket. You can follow the results live. So when Andrew McGregor hit that winning run, I think, um, yeah, I think Chelmer Park just erupted and everyone went, men everyone went mad. So, you know, it is, um, you know, really is the moments like that, are what you play the game for and, you know, the, to do it with your mates and, you know, with all that hard work is, is special. Um, and one thing I think we do realise, or certainly I've realised as I've got older, is how um, to win a league, it, it, a lot of it is really, really mental. Um, it's such a long season. Um, there's so many ups and downs. You really do have to stick with it mentally and all stick together to get to kind of achieve that goal, really. Um, so, yeah, again, I think it was just, um, yeah, remarkable that we've done it again. You mentioned that you've uh, been involved with the club for a while. How long is it that you have been involved at Chelsea now? Um, I mean, I've been there since um, yeah, ever since I was a ever since I was probably about ten ish. Right. Um, my dad, I mean, my dad used to play um, as Webby, and my dad used to play over at Brentwood, um, and he was on the committee there, and he was involved there, and he um, you know Keith Goodman, who obviously came over to Chelmsford. Um, and then once I kind of started to show a bit of an interest in cricket, watching my dad and that sort of stuff, then he took me over there and I just took to it, really. Um, and I've always enjoyed being involved in the club. I'm a strong believer that when you've got people like Bob and Eddie and Keith and many other volunteers, if they, if they give up a lot of their own free time to help you develop as a player and enjoy, you know, moments like this in a season, then I think it's only right that, you know, you should try and give something back. Um, for however small or large the con you know the contribution may be, um, I do think it's important that you you give back to the club. Um, so I really enjoy doing what I do. Um, it's great fun and seeing days and celebrating nights like when you win when you win leagues and see other teams succeed within the club. It's um, yeah, it makes it all the more special, really. That's good. That's good. And of course, you've got an Essex superstar in Aaron Beard amongst your ranks. Yeah, he's great. Um, you know, him and him and Sam are both absolutely fantastic. You know, they, you know, they're happy to give up as much of their time as they possibly can. And obviously, they're extremely busy with, you know, county stuff. And obviously, Sam been involved in the hundred as well. But you know, they always like to get up there when they can. And you know, Aaron's great. He loves to organise some socials um, and try and get involved. And he's helped out behind the bar. And you know, he he really is great. Um, and they're both so willing with the youngsters to give up their time as well. Um, 
you know, if people ever are got any questions or want some advice, they're always more than happy to, to give it as well. So, you know, we're lucky to have them, you know, as a club, we're extremely proud for all the, that, all the success that they've both had. Um, and it's great when they're up there and, and getting involved. It, it really makes everything a bit more special. So season's over. Do you have a bit of a break or are you planning already for next year? I think we're kind of already looking ahead a little bit. Um, I think, you know, I think it's never good to stand still. You always want to try and move forward um, and keep things moving. So, you know, we'll be looking to, we're always looking at how we can improve. Um, obviously, we're in the process of organising winter nets at the moment, which obviously we've not been able to do recently because of COVID. So I think hopefully we can get the youngsters in there and, um, you know, and get them going and that'll be great. And hopefully they'll start developing and working their way up the teams. But yeah, I think it's just, we, we never really try and, you know, have a break as such. I mean, you do sometimes need that, a little bit of a break, but I think you, um, we don't want to stand still. We want to just try and keep moving everything forward and, and keep enjoying the success. Um, and the success comes through hard work from the people on the committee, um, the captains and all the volunteers. So we just have to make sure it's up to us to keep that going. It's a good point. I don't think people, um, in the, just letting people know just how much work goes into running a club. It's not just a case of rocking up on a Saturday, playing, and then see you next week. It is, and, and Webby will, will, will back me up on this, it is 24-7, 365 days a year, isn't it? it the, the amount of work that goes into just keeping clubs at our level going uh, is quite phenomenal. And it's thankless because we all do it voluntarily. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the work that the committee do, um, I mean, is, is, you know, it's remarkable. The amount of time, I mean, I mean, Eddie Lawrence, the chairman, I think, I think I'm right in saying he's been on the committee longer than I've been alive, um, <laughs> which I always enjoy raising with him. But, um, you know, it's people like that that you need. And I think, yeah, a lot of people don't really don't, like you say, they really understand how much work does go into running a cricket club. I mean, you know, us, yourselves, Brentwood have all got, you know, a lot of teams and a lot of players and a lot of cults and, you know, these things don't kind of just um, miraculously happen. So it really does take a lot of um, a lot of admin and a lot of hard work. So you need those people and you're always looking to try and find ways to bring new people in as well. Um, so if you don't have the volunteers, then like you say, the, the club just doesn't run and everything comes to a standstill. So, you know, the volunteers really are um, kind of the heroes of the clubs, really. I mean, as much as the club is there for the players, um, without the volunteers and the people doing kind of all the all the boring admin and hard work in the background, then um, these things just don't happen. And away from the um, senior teams, uh, is there anyone that you want to highlight from the Colts or anyone that's been worthy of a mention for the year for, for Chelmsford? Yeah, there's been um, a couple. I mean, uh, Harry Page in the second team has come in and he, he's been fantastic. Um, I think he's someone who we looked at and thought, you know, he'll probably come up and do a job every now and again, but he's just got better and better. Uh, Rish Abu Padger, I think, is a future first team player. Um, looking a bit further down, I think there's Ben Lawrence has come on really well. Um, he's, he's bowls lovely off spin. I think he's definitely bright. There's some really good young Colts, and I think the way we're running the fifth team is kind of a development side for the Colts, and then they filter into the fourth team is is a really good way to do it and get them into kind of you know red ball, hard ball cricket and and kind of learn the game as such. So. Um, I think it's a real benefit for them to do that. And, yeah, there's certainly, there's certainly a few that are earmarked, I think, as potential um, future stars. All right. Um, Rob, excellent uh, chatting to you. And, again, congratulations on your success. And it sounds like uh, Chelsea in a really good position, top to bottom. Uh, and I think you're right for all of us, <clears throat> as we're sort of edging away from COVID, that uh, uh, the future's looking brighter for all of us and we will continue to have all of our hard work promoted, but still uh, many congratulations on uh, winning the Hamro Foundation Premier League and also for the second 11 for winning their league. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, great. Thanks for that. And uh, thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. That's Rob Hato from Chelmsford Cricket Club. Many thanks.